Well, good morning. Welcome back. I am so glad you guys could make it here at First Christian Church. And as normal, we're going to have our meditation and then we're going to have some great music and then we'll have our sermon. And today is the power source out of Romans chapter 7, starting on verse 15 through Romans chapter 8 to verse 17. But right now, let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare ourselves to go before the Lord. Reading out of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the willies of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. But Paul is trying to tell us here that we need to put on this full armor of God because we need to be protected against the attacks of the enemy. As you come to the table, we need to understand that we are forgiven and we remember what Jesus Christ did for us 2,000 years ago when his body was broken and his body and the blood was shed. But right now, that is true. When you come, come with repentance, but also come with a full armor, knowing that not only did Jesus protect you from yourself, protect you and cleanse you from your sins, but he also set a shield, a protection around you that the devil cannot come and attack and destroy you. So when you come to this table, come prepared. Come prepared to defend that gospel of Jesus Christ. Come in memory of what Jesus Christ did, for he has empowered us to accomplish these things. And the night before he was betrayed, he was talking to his disciples. And he's saying, this is my body that's going to be broken. I'm going to go through these things so that you can be redeemed, but you can also be protected. And how we protected? Well, he took the bread and he broke it. And he says, this is my body that is broken for you. This is for protection. This is designed that you may be protected against the attacks of the enemy, against physical and spiritual attacks, but also for healing. So church, let us partake together. Likewise, he reached down and picked up a cup and says, this is my blood that is shed for the remission of sin. This represents not only are we protected, not only are we guarded against the attacks, but we're also washed clean. And by this new covenant, we are now members of the family of God. So church, before we take, let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I do pray that you would touch me, fill me with your spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, walk with me that you would be glorified and magnified. Lord, as I take of this cup, let me remember your broken body, but also, Lord, let me remember that I am now a child of God. I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Church, let us partake together. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming. I hope you had communion with us, if not physically, at least in the spirit. And I hope that you can come and raise your voices now as we sing to God and we praise to God. We come with our offering of praise. Let us praise the Lord. Yeah. 
God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see and all I have needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me Welcome back. I am so glad you're here today. I am so glad that we're here to read of the Word of God. Today is the power source. Have you ever thought of power? Have you ever thought of what is and how we get our sources? We turn on the power. We turn on electricity. Do we actually think where that source comes from? When we plug in and we turn on our stuff, do we realize where that power is coming from? But I am not talking about power that we get from here or the power you get in a truck, in a vehicle, in your engine, in your car. I'm talking about the power that keeps us walking as Christians and keeps us walking where we need to be. We're going to be starting, if you'd open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 7, starting on verse 15. We're going to kind of go through all the way until chapter 8, all the way through verse 17. So bear with me. Let us get together and let us see what the Word of God has. Before we start, let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are a mighty God. Help us, Lord, that we may accomplish what you desire. You are a great God. You are the King of kings. So, Lord, I come to you humbly. Touch my voice. Touch my heart, Lord, that you would shine, Lord, and that you would be glorified in this message. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, before we unpack this message, before we break it all down, let's hear the whole thing in a single sentence. This is the whole sermon. Ready? For life change to happen, for life change to happen, we must access the power of God for change, admitting that we do not have the strength within us. That's the message. So, message is over. Everybody go home and have a great day. Do we, but here's the thing. Do you really understand that life, that for this change in our life to happen, we have to give access to God. Have we done that? Most of the Christians I meet are very tired. 
They're wore out. They're exhausted. You know, I, I, I don't understand why sometimes they're so tired. You know, sometimes I just need a break from church. Why are we so wore out? It's like saying, well, you turn on the radio. Well, we're going to turn the radio off because it's just, it's just tired of playing music. Or it's just tired of being plugged in. So we've got to unplug it for a while. What would happen to your radio if you unplug it? What would happen to the power source? Does that radio consistently have power? People say, well, I got batteries. Okay, take the batteries out. What happens then? You're drained, you're nothing, you're nothing but sitting there and it is a piece of equipment that cannot be used because it does not have any power. Problem with Christians being tired is we don't have the passion for God that we once had. We feel kind of vague or a vague guilt about us because we're not feeling like we used to feel. We're not walking in the strength that we used to walk. We're not doing the things that we used to do. So what happens? Well, sometimes we get a little guilty because, you know, we're just tired. I'm tired of working at the church. I'm tired of doing Sunday school. I'm tired of doing things in the church. Well, that's because where is your source that's taken you in the first place? The sequence is always the same. All the time. Countless reasons why we get so tired. The sequence is always the same. Renewed expectations. We always want to get that expectations renewed. We always want this new feeling. We get this energetic pursuit of something and we want to keep it going. But sometimes it just doesn't work that way. We, inc we Sometimes the way we're doing things, we get disappointed. And finally, we get exhausted. We try to do all the things. We try to get our expectations renewed. We try to get this energetic pursue, pursuit. We try to chase it down. And then comes disappointment because we don't get to the point that we really want to be at. And we finally just get exhausted. We finally just wear ourselves out. So what's wrong with us? What happened to me? What happened to this guy that was so full and so energetic about doing things in the church? What happened? Sometimes we may ask, why don't I learn? Why can't I just learn and just get it right at the first time? Why can't I change? Why can't just knowing that I need to change, why can't I just do it knowing that I have to because it's wearing me out? Why and how it happens? Well, here's the problem. Sometimes Christians live an exhausting Christian life. Very exhausting, very tiring. Look at Romans 7 verse 15. For what am I doing? I do not understand for what I will to do and do not practice. But what I hate that I do, if then I do what I wish not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, there is my flesh, nothing good dwells, for to, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will do or want to do, I do not, but the evil I will do, and I will always do it, then I practice it. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. We start to work in it. What did he say? For what I'm doing, I do not understand. And the things that I want to do, I don't do. For things that I need to do, I refuse to do. What, he, what did he finish up? For if I do it, I will not to do it. It is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So we're talking about Christians. We're talking about believers. What are they saying and what are they doing? Why are we getting so exhausted? A victorious Christian's life 
always eluded, has always eluded Paul. Have you noticed Paul? He's always struggling. This victorious life, Paul, the apostle, the one that wrote a third of the New Testament. You know, he says it. He says this Christian life, it eludes him. And said, amazingly, under the spiritual and the authority of the Holy Spirit, Paul, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, Paul admitted it. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was baptized by the Holy Spirit. He was walking with Christ. But yet he did say, I fail. I say to my own shame that I spend too many years trying to be a godly man in my own strength. How many could say that? How many of you could actually say, I say to my own shame that I spend too many years trying to be a godly man, a godly wife, a godly woman, a godly child in my own strength. We try to get things done for what we can do. The problem with approaching sanctification using the Bible as a simple action step, if I do A, B, C, and D, is that the results are always temporary. When I start following these rules by just saying, okay, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it prayerfully, but I'm doing it by steps, and I'm doing it on my own strength. And therefore, the results are temporary. You know, we can be loving. We can be patient. We can be self-controlled. We can pray. We can study the Bible and read it. And we can witness all these things going in the air like some professional juggler desperately to keep an act going. We try to keep the thing going because this is what we're supposed to do. And so therefore we kind of force ourselves into it. We kind of push ourselves into it. And we start putting on an act, going, doing it, but knowing that very soon it's going to come crashing down. Pretty soon all of this effort goes away. How many of you ever tried to start reading the Bible? And you start doing it and you start doing it mechanically. Before long, you're what? You've lost. You've forgotten. And it's put aside. Many Bibles are gathering dust because of that today. Make the choice to be done with all that is silly, posturing and posing and pretending. Make a choice to be done with that. That, you know what, I'm not going to be the silly posturing any longer. I'm going to start focusing on what the Lord has for me. I'm not going to sit there and worry about what other people think of me or how good of a Christian I am. I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. You know, the whole idea, look at me, look at me, look who I am. How hard am I trying to be a good Christian? Can't you see that I'm trying so hard to be a Christian? It's posturing. It's silliness, because that's not what the Bible is asking us to do. We must exchange our life. We must exchange our strength to His. How many of you ever prayed, Oh, Heavenly Father, give me strength. That is a terrible prayer. Why would you want God to give you strength? That means God has to release his authority on his strength and give that authority to you. I'll give you a better prayer. Lord, let me walk in your strength. Let me keep plugged into the source of the power. Don't surrender it to me because I'll mess it up. Look at Romans 7, 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. You see what Paul is saying here, so even though I try in my head, and I try to do it myself to serve the law of God, but the flesh and the law of the flesh always takes over. If you go to Romans Chapter 5, verse 15. Just the next page over. I love this. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. 
and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from the offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which comes from many of the offense resulted in justification. Paul is saying here, because of one man, we've all suffered sin. Because of one man, we've all had to pay the price. But there's also because of one man, we can be charged. But it's not like the offense. The offense comes automatically. The offense comes automatically. We're condemned automatically at times of birth. And the Jesus Christ, it doesn't come automatically. We have to make a choice. We have to surrender to Jesus. And we have to allow the source of the power to work in us to make us change. Just as a person cannot come to Christ until he comes to the end of himself. So you cannot experience the power to change until you are done with your own efforts. You want God to make the power and the change in your life? You have to quit trying to do it yourself. You have to surrender to God. What Paul, so that's what Paul did when he confessed. Look at Romans 7, 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, I'm a sinful who will deliver me from this body of sin? The question is, who's going to deliver you from your sin nature? Well, we know the answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul had to confess that he was failing because he was trying to do it in his own strength. And if we continue doing our own strength, we get burned out. We get tired and we actually want to quit. But these are not easy words to say in your heart. It's not easy. The answer is Christ in verse 25. The answer is Jesus Christ. You want to change? You have to obey and allow Christ to change you. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on you. He is going to open up and until you allow him as powerful as God is. You are the only person that can prevent the Holy Spirit from making changes in your life. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ and accept the power of the source. Our only hope is to get out of the way and let him, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit that lives his life through us. We want to be Christ-like, but we got to get out of the way. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take control. Then the Holy Spirit will break those habits, will break those things, and you will move forward. The gospel of Jesus Christ can be summarized into four words. Do you realize that? Four words. Jesus in my place. That's the gospel. Getting yourself off of your own throne and putting Jesus there. Jesus in my place. I cannot make the change. I cannot accept Christ. I cannot go to heaven unless I put Jesus in my place. And therefore, Jesus has to pay the price. Jesus is the one that justified us from the sin. Jesus is the one that gives us the authority to go into the house of God. Jesus is the one. So therefore, Jesus has to be take my place. I have to surrender myself to him. God's plan for sanctification can also be summarized in very simple words. Four words. Not I but Christ. So how do I get this? The gospel summarized in four words, Jesus in my place. The sanctification is not me, but Christ. I am sanctified because of what Jesus did, not because of what I did. You could try and try and try again, but until you surrender to Christ and it is not you, but Christ then sanctification, the process of changing your body, changing yourself. So, so now we understood that. We've got the sanctification. we got our place. We've got the gospel. How do we grow in Christ? How do we actually accomplish the things that God wants us to do? 
Well, it's the same way. Colossians 2, verses 2 on, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 6. And as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. What are you rooted in? In Jesus Christ. And established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in which with all thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophies and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. So how do I grow in Christ? I Therefore, I've received Christ. I must walk in him, but I also must be aware of who I am, that I do not fall and, and come short of the glory of God. So how do we get an empowered life then? How do we get to a place that we need to be? How do we get to a place that God can use us and we can lock into the source? In the beginning of Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. First of all, we need to understand the law. The law states that because I've sinned, I'm not ready. I cannot enter into heaven. The law states to get empowered, get this life empowerment, we must understand that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. We have been set free of our sin. We need to understand that and we need to follow that. The apostles repeated the key words indicating the source of power. Life in Christ is the Holy Spirit, is the spirit that we walk until we let Jesus live in life in us by his spirit. We are going to get exhausted. We are going to get wore out. We are going to allow the devil to defeat us because all the devil is going to do is wear us out. Look how much good you did. Look what you've done. Look what you've all done. Look where you've gone. Look what everything that has happened. Until we let Jesus live his life in us by his spirit, we can't make it. It just can't be done. In Ephesians 5.18, you've read this. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we have to get a filling of the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit is very similar to being filled with pain or maybe even joy. It is something that comes. How many times have you had pain in your life? It comes and goes. What about joy? How many times have you been happy? So the, being filled with the Holy Spirit is very similar with being filled with pain or joy it because it's something that comes and it goes it means to be overcome by a power greater than ourselves to be controlled by it when you have pain and someone breaks your heart you have no control over it it just comes when you have joy when things are happy you don't decide to wake up one day i'm going to get joy today no it just comes but when it does come, it does control you, either happy or sad. Either you're joyful or you're hurting. The spirit filling is the same thing. So let's analyze that a minute. The filling is commanded, by the way. It is a command to get filled by the, by the Holy Spirit. But nowhere in scriptures are we commanded to be indwelled or baptized or sealed with the spirit. Because these things happen to us at conversion. What we are commanded is to be filled. Once we accept Jesus Christ, the Spirit comes. The indwelling Spirit lives in us. We are then baptized by the Spirit. We are sealed by the Spirit. But that comes automatically. That is something that just happens when you surrender yourself to Jesus Christ. But there is a command, be filled. So how? How? How can this happen? Well, filling is a passive action. 
That means it's not forced on you. That means you can't be tricked into it. It means you've got to surrender to it. God does the feeling when we ask. We have to ask. We cannot do it ourselves. It doesn't matter how hard you try. You cannot be filled with the Spirit until you ask God to fill you with the Spirit of God. The filling is for everyone. It's for you. It's for me. It's for whoever believes that Jesus Christ is. But the feeling is not permanent. It is not continuous. It's not once you get filled, you're going to be all happy. Last week, we talked about walking and being having that mountaintop experience. Yes, you're baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you have the Jesus Christ indwelling. But being filled is like being charged up. It's being filled. It's like having a car with a big engine in it. You've got the power. But what happens when the tank runs out? It reminds me of a story. When a lady went and bought a Mercedes Benz, she paid a hundred and something thousand dollars for it. And she was all happy. She drove it for about a week. And then she called the dealer up. And she says, you know, I really enjoyed the car. It had everything I wanted. It had all kinds of power. But now it won't run. It's dead. It's only been a week or a week and a half since I bought it. What is wrong with you guys? You guys make, i supposed to make these cars. I thought they were good cars. Well, the dealer says, don't worry about it. We'll send someone out. They came out. They looked at the car and the guy looked at it and said, lady, when's the last time you put gas in the car? She says, what do you mean? She says, it needs to be filled. It left filled. But you, you drained it. Now you got to refill it. That's the same thing with us. We need this refilling sometimes. But the refilling is for everyone. And it is not permanent. Believers are not baptized by the Holy Spirit for once and for all. You're not filled for once and for all. We get exhausted. We get tired. And therefore we need to get a refilling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that. It says, Paul said that. Paul says, I like to get refilled daily. Of the Holy Spirit. However, there are multiple fillings. Acts 2, 4, 4, 8, 9, 12, 13, 9, many places in scriptures where the filling is multiple. That is not meaning you're not saved. Just because you're exhausted and you need a refilling doesn't mean you've lost salvation. That just means you need to get charged up again. It's like having a car with a dead battery. It needs to be recharged. The passage includes five indicators of the Holy Spirit filling and controlling presence. Let's look at that. Verse 14. Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, starting on verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, there are the sons of God. So for many that are led by the Spirit, first of all, it's leadership. Who and when, who is leading you? Are you being led by your own conscience? Are you being led by your own desires? Are you being led to do things that you want to do? Or have you surrendered to God and allowed the Holy Spirit to lead you? So the first thing, the first indicator that you're filled with the Holy Spirit is who is controlling is God leading you or are you leading yourself? Look at verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage against, again to, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So there's confidence. First of all, the Holy Spirit gives us leadership. It leads us, but it also gives us confidence to accomplish what he's leading us to do. Look at the last part of it. Abba, Father, Daddy. It means intimacy. That means he is not just a, a, a taskmaster. He is saying, Abba, Daddy, Father. Not just, oh, Father, heart in heaven. Daddy, Dad. He has a very close intimacy with you. This also gives us security when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. The Spirit himself bear witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. 
So he identifies who we are. It tells us when you've got that fullness and that indwelling spirit and it's filled, then it is going to identify itself and it's going to bear witness that you are now a child of God and that the devil cannot break you, cannot steal from you, and cannot do anything to you if you're filled and you're walking and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. But there's a problem. We can, we can bring hindrances to the Spirit filling. We can hinder the filling of God. When our actions are not pleasing to the Holy Spirit, we greatly limit the Spirit of God to work in our lives. When we come to church worried about lunch instead of word, listening to the Word of God, we're limiting, we're giving hindrances to the Holy Spirit. When we refuse to listen and obey the Word of God, we hinder the Holy Spirit and it does not work and we do not get fulfilled and we do not get refilled and therefore we get tired and sometimes we walk away. Sometimes we grieve the Spirit. Have you ever grieved the Spirit? Ephesians 4, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So we can grieve the Spirit. How do we grieve the Spirit? That's one is not listening to it, but doing things we should have left alone. How many times have you gone back to your old ways? When you go back to living the way you were before, you grieve the Spirit. We also squinch the spirit. Have you ever squinched the spirit? First Ephesians 5, first Ephesians 5, 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, teachings. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. How do we squench the spirit? We start doing the evil things. God will not dwell in a fornicated body. God will not dwell in a person that is out there living a life that is destructive to the Holy Spirit. Refusing to do things that we must do will quench the Spirit. So how do we get filled with the Spirit? First of all, it's very simple. 1 John 1, 19, confess all your sins. All known sins. Lord, I have sinned and I'm holding this. I have hated my heart, whatever that sin may be. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. That's an amazing thing in Luke 11, 9 through 13. Talks about asking the Holy Spirit. Lord, I've accepted you. Lord, I have sinned. I've, forgive me of my sins. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Give me that renewed spirit. Fill me that I may be on fire again. But here's the thing. This doesn't work if you don't believe. You must believe you have received the spirit and the filling. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. Everything that we do, we do it in faith and we trust. I believe that the word of God is true. And the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. If you ask in the will of God, all your prayers are going to be answered. So why not ask the Lord to Lord? I need to be filled, but you're, he will not fill you if you have sin and you're harboring sin. We have to surrender to the Lord. Once we surrender to him, then we confess our sins. We accept Jesus Christ. I'm not talking salvation here. I'm talking being filled with the spirit, walking with him. You cannot do the ministry of Jesus Christ on your own strength. You will fail. You'll get tired and you will collapse. But you can come and get refilled just like the ladies with her Mercedes. All they had to do was put gas in it. Now this car had all the power it wanted. It was like new again and she was all happy until she had to refill it again. So today, ask the Lord to fill you with your spirit that you may be filled, that you don't get tired and wore out. Don't go to church on your own strength. Be obedient to what God has and be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you don't know Jesus, first thing you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Then surrender to him 
and allow the Spirit to start sanctifying you, cleansing you of all your sins. You want to quit smoking? Surrender to God. You want to quit drinking? Surrender to God. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, I'm so glad the heavens are rejoicing. If you haven't, do so now. Pray this prayer with me. Contact First Christian Church here in Peru, Indiana, or go find a pastor <coughs> that can help you. But God will and is faithful. Let us pray. Lord, for those that are listening that do not know you, I have sinned and I have come short of the glory of God. <coughs> Lord, I'm asking you to forgive my sins. Fill me with your spirit that I may walk according to your ways. Lord, you are a mighty and awesome God. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Find a church, come to First Christian, or find a place. But God will bless you. God bless. Have a great day.